Breathing, it's really important. You only need to watch an infant breathing that has bronchiolitis and you can see that they are really, really struggling just to get adequate oxygen and air in. A child in severe respiratory distress, they can use up to 30% of their energy only for breathing. So the inspiratory phase is very important to improve the clinical condition. I've been working in intensive care for 25 years. Published around 80 to 100 papers. All basically in the area of critical care or respiratory medicine. We're very fortunate having a research institute here uh, attached to the Children's Hospital, uh, which is helping us to perform good quality research. The last 15 to 20 years in mechanical ventilation for children with respiratory disease, there was not much development or new techniques available, and we were desperately waiting for a breakthrough that makes a difference to the outcome of these children. We did utilise a lot of BiPAP and CPAP, either through a nasal mask or a full face mask. A child who is sick can't tolerate a face mask and they will take it off, uh, rub it off, and so we have to use uh, sedation. We know that these drugs are not necessarily good for the development of children. Initially, I was very sceptical that the high flow will have any effect in very sick kids. It didn't look like uh, much support and there was certainly a lack of any evidence that it makes a difference. Despite my doubts over the next five years, we saw a huge reduction in intubation rates, which decreased from one third down to roughly 5% in our unit, which is a huge impact. After a while, having seen how it works in ICU and how easy it's used, we were wondering if we can use high flow as well outside ICU, which we quite successfully did and published. We showed in our previous study that we had a cost reduction of $1.2 million per year for a small children's hospital and a reduction in length of stay after we introduced high flow in the paediatric ward. And we currently perform new studies and preliminary findings are showing that we estimate roughly a $50 million cost saving in Australia if high flow is introduced in the paediatric wards. There's great value in starting the high flow as, as soon as you can when they come into your emergency department because the patients often respond beautifully and that's the other good thing about high flow is that it takes minutes literally to, to set them up. The fact that it's been implemented in the emergency department and in the ward means that the therapy starts before the patient deteriorates. It means that they can avoid ICU completely. There's nothing nicer than a parent being able to nurse their child when they're sick. And I think that helps with the healing process as well. Not just good for him, it's good for us to be able to pick him up, cuddle him and just give him what a baby needs. Oh, the difference is unbelievable. It's nice to see her not struggling. Isn't it, baby? The main change that we have seen within intensive care is not any fancy equipment and new uh, techniques, it's actually the high flow. I certainly believe it's one of the most exciting introductions that we have seen over the last 10-15 years in respiratory support.